Welcome back to my channel, The Art of Light and Color. My name is Leslie Onstead. Today we're going to do an introduction of the brand new Polypore 12 piece starter set that has 12 colors, your 8 ounce bottle of Vivid Polypore, and 25 of the plastic scoops. This first section is going to be a quick voiceover. You can see me putting about an eighth of an ounce or a little bit less in the bottom of some one ounce souffle cups and I've sped this up for the sake of saving us time. And I'm putting in approximately oh a third of a scoop to half of a scoop of these little one eighth teaspoon tasting spoons and we're using the primer elements uh, art pigments. They're a dry paint watercolor, dry paint coloring system uh, that we offer here at Color Art, and they're mixable. Basically, you're getting a chemistry set that you can intermix. I mean, in this video, I'm going to show you how to take 12 colors, and I think we make 37. But the possibilities are endless. With this, with these 12, you can make your beautiful browns. You have no idea the color combinations you could come up to experimenting. Uh, mixing these two. Now I'm going to work on a little basic uh, recipe card that hopefully will go in these first packages that are going out. But um, I think for the sake for people that want to experiment and mix, you know, uh, this is a great beginner set because you can make almost any color of the world with any color in the world with this, these 12 colors and the five interference colors in the bling it line. They're the uh, interference micas and that's what we use to lighten our colors. We don't use white. White blanks out your color. It it mats it. It keeps the light from passing through and refracting back at your eye which is the whole technology about our paint. Our colors are ground with pure water soluble color milled with the five interferences and that's how we make our colors up. This co first color I'm mixing um, is kind of that uh, egg yolk color is sunburst yellow. This is spice pumpkin, a pretty deep spicy orange and yet if you wanted a lighter orange you'd add a little bit of the sunburst yellow to it. This color is called love struck. If you find this color a little bit too cool you could add a few grains of that spice pumpkin to warm it up just to give you some suggestions right off the bat. This is Playful Peony, our coral, which is kind of a pinky coral. This color is a lot of people's favorite. This is Wild Jasmine. It is a hot rhodamine violet in a violet pearl. This color is called Snapdragon, which it's, sorry the camera is picking it up as a little bit blue, but it's a violet in a violet pearl. This is Mediterranean blue, which is kind of a pretty light aqua. This is majestic blue, which is more of a deeper, deep water blue. This next color is mystic blue. Now this is the darker teal, so you now have a teal blue in the line. Teals come in blues and greens. And the next color is Guatemalan green to give you the green teal side of the turquoises. This next color is called Irish Mist, which is a bright in your face Kelly green. The luck of the Irish green. And last but not least is Olivine, a beautiful earth tone olive green. Next up, I'll be mixing them with all the interferences to show you how you can make your own custom colors. So we're going to try to kill a couple birds with one stone. The point of this exercise is A to C what the color sunburst yellow, the yellow in your paint pouring starting set looks like, okay? Uh, how when mixing with other interferences, it changes the way you see the color. The term interference comes from the color interferes with the light. I'm going to try to do this on my wrist with another glove. And 
and you see, I don't know what color this is, is this interference red or gold? You see the color of the mica before you see the color of my skin. I think that's interference red. Yeah, that's interference red. It's very subtle because my skin is kind of pinky. Here's interference green. And you see the color of the green before you see the color of my skin tone. Okay. So same things happen when you're mixing your paint. Okay. The mica shifts the light Light is how you see color, and then thus it changes the way your color looks, and it actually changes your color. Okay, so in one cup, these are um, eighth of teaspoon tasting spoons. We're going to put some in the set. You're going to get 25 of these in a set. Okay. They're washable, reuse them, you're gonna find them really handy. Now I'm eyeballing this. If I was gonna precisely measure exactly what I was using, I could sit and flatten the whole thing out as an eighth of a teaspoon and then basically cut in half and say, okay, I'm using sixteenth of a teaspoon. We're gonna make little itty bitty tiny batches. The beautiful thing with the polypore. The Vivid Polypore is, it's already in a beautiful fluid blend, meaning the consistency is perfect for paint pouring without having to add any additives or water, unless of course you're gonna do the Dutch pour, which is supposed to be really watery. But this has also got a beautiful consistency for brush painting, it's like buttermilk. You can add a few drops of our a uh, product called The Solution, right now it's just this vivid pouring medium, it's basically our pouring medium, but it's a product called The Solution, which we've already, we've had for a while, we just revamped it though, we have a new recipe for The Solution that's out now. So the idea of The Solution is, it will thin down uh, the polypore a little bit more if you need it to, which I don't think you do, not for regular paint pouring, if you have vivid enamel, you're going to put, put a few drops of this in here to thin down your already existing enamel if you want to, to get your enamel, which is very viscous to the consistency of pouring without having to add water. But the solution has a lot of other uses. But the beauty of this is now we can mix up just tiny little batches of the primary elements into paint. Primary elements is a dry paint system, just the color without it being in the traditional already acrylic pre-mixed acrylic base, similar to the tubes you get of Liquitex. Okay, when you're buying your Liquitex paint, it's already in a tube. They've mixed it up with their acrylic binder. It's a done deal. Now, that's a great product. Love Liquitex, love Windsor Newton, love Golden. I, I, we need matte color, matte opaque color it makes us look better. We're like the icing. We're that beautiful shimmering, glimmering, topping, maybe the second or third color you put in your paint pouring to add a little bling or pop or some brilliance to your painting. You can brush paint with the primary elements. You could thin the vivid poly pour down a little bit more with some of the solution. My apologies for my own personal bottle. And then you've essentially made uh, something thin enough to do glazing. So, but think about this as the color that you would normally get in your tube of paint in a dry form. It's called Primer Elements. It's a dry paint system. So I'm gonna put, I think I put some green in here. Let's make sure I got enough. I got a little sidetracked here. Here's some interference red and I'm gonna to try to put like a half of this eighth of teaspoon scoop in, okay? I'm gonna put an eighth of a teaspoon scoop of just the pure color in here. And then because I, this stuff is very saturated, if I went 50-50, you might see a very light gradient change, okay? So for the chance of just being able one time in the video show you how you can customize your colors, okay? Basically, I'm just taking the tip of that spoon. You see how much is in there? Dropping it in to the red. Gonna put the same amount, dropping it into the green. 
Now I'm not, these are little one ounce souffle cups. I'm going to probably fill them up to a quarter of that. If that, because basically I'm doing this as a test of brush paint on it. I don't want to waste anything. I don't want to waste the polypore. I don't want to waste the primary elements or my micas. Okay. Now I've, I've put it in a smaller bottle. Um, in your starter set though, by the way, and of course you can tell I've been using it this week already, there is an 8 ounce bottle of the Polypore. It's a $9.99 value. If you get the full 32 ounce, it's $32. And of course we always have some kind of Reading coupon on our website you need to look for. It's usually on the front page, on the primary element page, and then the resin art page in our website. So I'm going to squeeze about a quarter in here. I don't even need a quarter. Just enough to cover my pigments up. And that's the beautiful thing. I can just do a tiny little batch, preserve my primary elements, picture, you know, preserve my interference micas, not to use too much of my polypore, my acrylic medium. And See if you can get a close-up on this. Normally, lately, I've been doing voiceovers, but for this, to watch it in real time while I'm mixing it, I'll do my very best to cut my language short so we don't have a lot of editing to do. So there's the straight sunburst yellow. It's kind of a egg, egg yellow, the center of the egg yolk. Perfect for Easter this time of year. Okay. And here's our color in the interference green. Now it's pretty transparent. It's very much a daffodil yellow with a green color. If I thought it wasn't saturated enough, I could go add. Go ahead and add, you can always add more, but you can't take it away. So if I said, you know, I want that just a little bit more yellow, and we're talking just a grain or two on the end of my spoon, I can deepen that if I want to. Now, you're still seeing a smix. It's not because you don't have to, you're not adding water or all this other stuff to make it happen, but you do need to be able to break down the, the color in there. There's water soluble color that needs to dissolve. Okay, so that's the one in the green, okay? Here's it in the interference red. Now basically it's going to be the same value, meaning the depth of color, right? Because I put about the same amount of mica, the same amount of color in it. But one has the warmth of the interference red and one has this very interesting, almost, it looks almost green in the cup. Okay. Rinse my brush off just so I can give you a, a more pure representation. Now here is the sunburst yellow. Look how beautiful that is. And it's kind of warm. Now I didn't show you if you just took regular interference gold because that's the base this is in. This is an interference gold base. You would get a lighter version of this yellow and keep it in that gold base. Okay, so here it is with uh, just a few little grains of yellow to a sixteenth of a teaspoon of interference green. Yes, now you see how it's a lighter value. I got it lighter without having to add white. And believe me, I could add more color to this easily. You can always add more, but you can't take it away. 
and when it dries, that green cast is showing up. So now we have a green gold effect, depending upon what you want to use this yellow for, okay? Let's do the other side with the interference red. Again, cup to cup, side by side, they're going to look a little bit similar, yet you can tell this has that little green cast too, just looking at it. And they're the same amount of mica, same amount of colors, essentially. Here's the one with red. Something got in there that didn't belong in there. I'm trying to get the light to hit this just right so you can see this. Okay, so you can barely see it on the side here. But the interference red is starting to show up. Oh, come on, light. It's curling funny. <laughs> see that? See how it's changing? See the interference red in this bottom section here? See that? And then the straight sunburst yellow in the middle that's drying beautifully with that gold and then this top part it's already almost dry with the interference green and now you can really see the red below and the green on top that's what happens when you add mica to these colors and so i want you to be able to make full usage of your interference set okay so that's the first color sunburst we're working with spice pumpkin this is kind of a deep pumpkin orange. So let's put same thing, about a half a scoop of the spice pumpkin in here. want to give the grains a chance to break down okay but look at the consistency it's beautiful and silky so my two other colors here and I'm going to add a little bit of the boy that's a lot actually we're supposed to be really careful with the large sparkle bling it but just for the fun of it I'm going to put the large large sparkle going at gold in here. Hope that's not a mistake. But why not experiment on camera for you guys? This is the interference red. Which gold or red, you know, since orange is made out of mixing yellow and red, gold and red are the more obvious tones to thin them down with. Doesn't mean you shouldn't experiment and maybe put a little bit of interference violet in this, but it would really change this orange more of a pinky coral tone just by putting the mica in there. I'm going to add a few grains of the Spice Pumpkin to each one of these. Boy, and that is real still. Look how rich that is, and I hardly put any in there. It's a pretty strong color, I will say. Okay, now I'm wondering if I have too much in here. Like I said, you can always add more color, but you can't take it away. I think I was, I think I used half that much in the yellow. Gotta be careful moving forward. Oh, I think also because I used a partial of the bling it because I didn't want to go too far into the bling it. Let me add what I would have done in the other half of the interference gold and that may lighten this one that I made with the sparkling bling it a little bit better. So I'm going to add about the same amount of Michael that I put in there before. Because to be fair, I added less to the big sparkly stuff because it's, the big sparkle bling it's are super, super shiny. And incidentally, we have another ones coming in. They're called Super Sparkle. You will not believe how big and sparkly these new ones that we've got inbound coming in right now. But more on that later. 
So let's see what happens by adding that more of that interference gold. Am I going to get more of a mandarin orange color versus the dark spice, spicy pumpkin color? And it does look like adding that little bit of the gold has changed how they look. Now we'll see them on the paper, but this one definitely looks more like a tomato red almost. It's just a deep orange. Okay, so we got my brush wiped and dry. So this is the Spice Pumpkin in its purest form. And I believe this is the color with the interference gold. Now, instead of wiping it off, I can literally take the paint right off that spoon. Put it right on my surface here. You can see the differences in the way they're drying and how the gold is changing that. Now the red on this side is going to be very subtle. I'm not going to kid you on that. The difference between going interference red and interference gold on a color like Spice Pumpkin, again, very subtle. But if you know you have this option and you want to lighten it, maybe you've only got one of those colors, you've got a way to lighten your colors without adding white. And if you want to maintain your brilliance of color and shine, use your interferences. The interference mica is a gold mine. As far as helping you take this 12-piece color set and immediately turn it into 36 colors just by having the mica. Close up, you can see the interference red sort of coming through as it's changing it. The center, the center has all kinds of different stuff. It's made with gold, but it's also got some of the iron oxide golds in it. And then if you look at the top, look how much that gold is coming through. Changing this shimmer where that red is much, much more subtle on this side and the gold is kind of in your face on this side. But this is the Spice Pumpkin mixed with the Interference Red, Interference Gold and in the center in its purest form. So this next color is the Love Struck. Now Love Struck is our deepest, bloodiest red. And, of course, red would be the natural thing to add to it. But I'm also going to add some violet to it. Not sure what's going to happen. Um, adding interference red to it is going to actually soften it just slightly to a lighter shade. Adding the violet could turn it more into a pink. But this is a way to lighten your reds without actually adding white to them. Okay, so I've got about half of the scoop of the Love Struck. And I'm going to be careful this time. I'm just putting a pinch, the same pinch, on each end before I go crazy with the mica. This one is the Interference Red. 
I'm going to put a nice, generous half scoop in here so that red has a chance to do its thing. And then this will be, be interference violet. Basically what we're giving you is a chemistry set. You have your group of interferences, you have your 12 colors, you have your polypore. Now red is real grainy. You're going to have to give it a couple seconds to dissolve. There's a lot of color in here. There's the color that has the least mica in the line are our reds because if you put too much gold in something it turns it orange. If you too much put too much red in something it turns it pink. So there's a real nice close-up of the love struck red. Okay, so let's play with it with I forget which one this is, but we'll know as soon as we mix it up. We should know as soon as we mix it up. We know the red could turn it more pink, but the violet could turn it more. Oh, that's a pretty color. Wow, that's a pretty color. <laughs> Gorgeous. We'll find out in a minute. We'll compare the two because I might have mixed them up. I think this is the violet, but I could be wrong. We we'll won't know until they're totally mixed. And again, give the grains time to mix. No, you're not having to add water, pouring medium, all this other stuff. I know people say, oh, I don't want to watch colors being mixed. Well, you need to know that the primary elements have to be mixed. Okay, so look at them side by side. I could still see some color being broke down here little microscopic particulates that still need to be broken up. It's The reds are the hardest and the chunkier ones to break down, but boy, are they pretty. And look at that. I can tell which one's made with the red, that's this one, and which one's made with the violet. This looks more of a beautiful peachy, deep peachy coral and this is almost like a mauvey violet. Completely different. And just by putting a little bit of interference in them, interference violet, interference red, we've changed the color of love struck. So let's start with the love struck in the center. It is a nice deep red. Almost cool, but not. You want to warm this up a little bit. Just add a few grains of spice pumpkin, and it'll come more to center for you if you want to warm this red up. That's the beauty of having this little chemistry set. down. I think this is the violet. It has kind of a mauvey pink cast to it. The lilac, that violet mica is going to really shimmer on the top when this stuff dries. Okay. And then, clean my brush off. Let's do it with the interference red. Now you see side by side they have a similar value because I, value meaning the shade of color might look similar at this angle, right? Because I've used a similar amount of mica to a similar amount of color. But 
But as they dry, let's see if we can get a real good close up of this. Again, sort of similar value, but as we turn it, this one on this side you can tell is warmer because of the interference red. It's almost a coral. This one on this side, and get the light to hit this just right. This is more of a pink on this side because of the interference violet. And of course you can see how rich that one in the center is. That's absolutely gorgeous. That's just the pure love struck mixed in there. So next up is the color Jasmine. It's a favorite of a lot of people. It's in a lot of our sets. It's a pure hot rhodamine violet, meaning a beautiful red violet. And this is the peony that will be next. So let's get a little bit in the bottom of each one of them, a little squirt in the bottom of each of these cups. So I'm thinking what am I going to do? I don't want to put it with gold. The obvious one is violet. It's already mixed in violet, so mixing in more violet is just going to lighten it. Okay, I could do it with a sparkly larger particulate of the bling it violet and it not interference but the big sparkling grains. Um, I could add red. It might make it more of a pink. But believe it or not, you can also add a blue, which would make it kind of strange looking. But just for the fun of it, I'm going to actually do a fourth one for y'all. Take a look at that. So we'll do one in red. We're going to do one in the violet. And... One in the gold, one in the blue, just again, just as a lark. Because blue, you know, is really close when you start to get to the purple families, okay? And the blue might give you that, that changeable look like we have in a color in our resin art line called Fantasy Fuchsia. It's a hot red violet, but when you turn it, you see these bits of blue. So let's put the proper amount of the jasmine in each one of these cups to begin with. There's the jasmine. Now there's just going to be a tip of jasmine on the end of this spoon in each one of the cups. Do the same amount so they're all the same value. This one I'm going to put the violet in. Good half scoop of the violet. This one I think I'm going to put the blue in and I'm going to set that aside so we know that the blue won't make a mistake and not know where the blue is. And the one over here is going to have a little bit of interference red. The interference red may turn it to more of like a regular pink is to take some of that um, purple out of it slightly, okay? Depends on how it's going to mix. So we know this one is done with the violet. It's going to make it an even lighter, brighter shade with that beautiful hot rhodamine pink. This is the straight jasmine. Several shades darker, full concentration. This is the one with the red, interference red, which should give us more of a standard pinky, baby pink color and not be quite as, I can see it, I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see it. Anyway, you want to give the grains a chance to break up. They're not making instant coffee. You still have to break down your color particulate as this is a dry paint system. And I want to make sure that all the uh, polypore from the bottom is mixed up. Now this one, we what well, kept aside intentionally. This is with an interference blue. We 
we lay this down, this is really going to look like it's color shifting. Now in the tub, it's just going to look like a light pink. All of these do. Here's a regular jasmine. Here's the violet. Here's the red. Here's the blue. Are you looking at next to one another? Human eye can hardly tell any difference because they're same color saturation. This one I can it looks a little bit different, and this one looks a little bit different. And this looks more middle of the road pink. Okay, so this is full strength jasmine. In your face. Our colors hot, 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 hot. It's a very, very clean color, which is good for adding a secondary mica to it. Like, is it violet on violet? Is it violet on red? Is it violet on blue? Okay, so I think this is one mixed with the interference violet. Definitely a lighter shade, right? Because we use mostly interference mica with just a few grains of color. Again, you want it darker, you can always add more, but you can't take it away if you put too much color in. Turn this around. I'm gonna break this in half I'm going to paint this half mixed with the interference red. Let's hope this works so you guys can see this. And this one is mixed with the interference blue. If I did this right. Again, going down, it's going to look like the same pink, right? Light dotty pink. This already looks a little bit warmer than this does to my eye. But I'm sitting in front of the camera here with lights on. I have the luxury of looking at this up close and personal as it's painting. So, the violet part is going to be kind of subtle next to the other one because the one in the middle you can see is darker here. That's violet. This is made with violet, but as it turns you can see the violet cast. Okay. So that interference red softens up the pink. You can see it's kind of softening up. There's not as much violet as in the other side. But over here, Take a look, you can see the blue. See the blue? And then right next to it, right here is that red. But you see the blue, you see the red. So this next patch is the Playful Peony. Now Playful Peony could go gold. It would make it way more of a deeper coral because Peony is your it's a pink coral. And there's a little bit of yellow in here. Oops, I just dropped, dropped some in here already as I shook it out there. So, let me get that in. Let's get the... Like a half scoop. And then just a tip of the playful peony in each one of these. I know I keep using the same mixers because I'm going right down the color wheel here. Oh, you'll see it switch to greens and blues pretty soon. Um, peony, that's a coral. So it's going to lend itself to pink, red, or gold. Okay, Red would be kind of the obvious. Uh, going with a little bit of the violet and the gold might make it different. 
So I'm going to add a little bit of interference gold to this cup. A little interference red to this cup. Oh, that was violet, so I guess we're going to go violet. I know, we're going straight down the color wheel, so here's your coral color, Playful Peony. A little bit similar to Blushing Lily and the Resin Art line. This is the one with the violet. It's going to make a really pretty pinky coral. And this is the one with the gold in it. Oops. I don't want to get it in the other ones. I got it on my finger, but I'm trying to keep these colors pure. I don't want that mica to pop into the next one. Similar value, but I'm not sure if I can get the light to catch this. The gold changes the warmth of this. The violet changes how cool this looks. Straight playful peony. I think that was the violet. This is the gold. You're going to just notice it's a slightly warmer tone. Not quite as pink. That may be what you're looking for. You're looking for a peach tone that's not that pink. Okay, so if you notice over here, this almost looks like I put interference red in it, but I didn't because it's getting a warmer color, right? It's warmer. You can see the warmth over there. And see the violet in here, how the light's hitting the violet. I mean, it's still wet, but you can see the violet in here. You can see how the gold has warmed up this color on this side. Of course, this is how the pure... Playful Peony dries in the middle. Warm, cool. So I've sped this part up. In this segment, I'm going to do a swipe. I'm going to take the five colors that I mixed in the interferences. I think I have 16 total because I did four colors in the Jasmine. I put a drop of the MicroLube 200 um, silicone oil in each one of them. Just put a drop in them. And I think I'm just going to have just the right amount of paint to cover this little 10 by 10 canvas. I'm putting some white cardstock under there in case anything drips over the edge. But I don't think I'm really going to have that much problem. And we're going to do a black swipe over all of these colors. Now I'm hoping that the nuances of say the jasmine with the interference blue and the uh, sunburst with the interference green shows through to give you guys an idea of just how dramatic the putting interference micas in your colors can be okay so I've got them all lined up now <laughs>
and I did speed this up so we could do a quick voiceover on it but my thinking is I'm gonna start with the brightest most electric colors on the top because wherever I'm going to um, use the black you know to come down with the most amount of black which is in that top end I want to make sure there's plenty of hot pink and yellow up there so I'm just spreading the various versions of the jasmine It's interesting because I only have like a couple spoonfuls of each color here to play around with. <laughs> but but uh, it was enough to cover this up, surprisingly. This is the love struck going down. Boy, that's dark color compared to the rest of those really, really light pastels. I chose to take one of those pale jasmine colors and kind of dribble it across the top of that love struck just to kind of brighten it up. No real rhyme or reason, just kind of an intuitive thing of what might pop next to one another with the choices that I have that I've mixed up. And of course, those of you that had trouble swiping, um, part of the trick is making sure that your area is nicely covered. You mean you can take your finger and dip it in or that stick like I did to dip it in to make sure you have as little white space or holes as possible. The smoother your paint, the, the smoother your swipe will be. So normally I usually end up with this big black area in the top, but I'm feeling a little bit brave here. I'm putting the color all the way to the top with hopes that I get lucky this time.
Okay, so I'm using Artist Loft Black mixed with a little bit of uh, Liquitex pouring medium and some water. And that is my Yupo paper. And I reuse Yupo paper over and over and over again for my swipes. Love it, love it, love it. It's the perfect texture for swiping. Make sure you get that first half inch in the paint and you're pulling the paper almost straight with the canvas. You're not pushing up. You're going as close to the canvas as you can without touching it. I'm taking the excess paint on the end of my Yupo paper and kind of touching up the sides of my canvas. And now I've got smaller strips of Yupo. And wherever it felt like the black mist, I'm going to take the opportunity right now and touch it up while the paint's still reacting. And then here I'm putting a little bit of black, like one drop of black on the Yupo and then hitting one spot that I want to hit with the black. So I can do kind of a detailed swipe where I want the color to go. Here's a close-up after about 10 minutes. You can see little bits of blue in there. Just little hints of like on that bottom right there where the jasmine gave you a little hint of blue. Um, right there in that light pink section you see little bits of blue. Now in person that yellow is popping a little bit of green to me. I'm not sure if this camera is going to be picking it up. I just got to say, the polypore dries so fast um, because you're not adding Floetrol. And I know I'm going to probably get a, flack, a lot of flack on this, but Floetrol is a paint conditioner that opens up your drying time. When you guys are using high amounts of Floetrol, like 50% or 40% or 70%, you're asking for the paint to take forever to dry. I spoke to a friend last night. She goes, oh my God, my swipes take two, three weeks to to completely cure and then I have to, you know, put a varnish coating on them to resin them and I'm like, this thing was almost dry in six hours. I mean, it's dried overnight now. It's completely dry. I could put varnish on this thing and resin this in a couple days. So here's a close-up of the swipe right after I poured it before it was dried. I know we're kind of doing this out of sequence because you saw the dried piece just a few seconds ago, but this is a close-up with my camera that had the um, flashlight on it so you could see how glittery this paint is. This will give you kind of an idea of what it'll look like once resin's on top because it the, the shimmer is amazing in the primary elements and when you put resin or anything clear on top of it, it's just going to magnify how beautiful the color is. Those little specks of bluish violet in there is from that blue violet. That yellow on top was very warm. That's probably the red violet. This green coming through that yellow, you'll see those little pinches of what might look like a little greenish to you here and there. Here's another angle where you can see little pockets of that lighter yellow and the blue and yet the warmer yellow coming through. Well, I hope you um, join us for part two, which We'll be in filming now while this is loading up. And we'll go through the other seven colors in the Primal Elements Star Set. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.